Uh, I forgot. I was just like, what show is this? <laughs> Who are we? Who are that. we? <laughs> um, thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, my name is Jay Gill. I'm Mika Kenya. And this is These Two Locas. Today on our show, we have Julieta. <laughs> founder and owner of Buena Vibras Healing, and she is also a researcher in a dope-ass Dominican group. So, bam, that is my intro to you. Uh, uh. Thank you. Um, so today we have Julieta, and so we have to give you guys a little bit of background. Post-COVID, and while Mika was beautifully pregnant, which you will see in a future uh, shot, we had Julieta come in. We did a really great interview. Um, but then COVID happened and life kind of changed for the world. And so we wanted to get Julieta back on the show to kind of give us an update on her life, her work, and what's been going on post-COVID. And here we are today. So Julieta, thank you for joining us. Yes. Yes. Thank you for having me. Yes. So I, I'm personally excited because I think compared to Jay Gill, I don't have as much knowledge on the work that you do, and I was always very curious about it, but mm -hmm. going to later why, like, I may have had preconceived notions <laughs> from my culture and my family about um, what you do, but um, I'd love to hear, like, more about this, and I'm personally excited. <laughs> yes, me too. I'm all, I got y'all. Gotcha. Uh, at least I hope so. So <laughs> thanks, Chad, for, for that intro. <laughs> um, yes. So I'm a researcher, so I focus on memory and aging. Um, and I also have my little no, it's not little. Let me not limit myself. Mm -hmm. I have my business called Buena Vibra Healing, where I offer alternative like healing practices. So I really focus <laughs> so I really focus on um, Reiki and like um, aura what? cleansings and what else? Readings and things like that. I'm all about like getting people with like the good vibes. Like it's really what the name is. Like Buena Vibras. So explain to the audience how you went, how you started in research as a Dominican woman in research and what that mean, has been meaning to you to work with the community. And then we could jump further into the Reiki and your personal business. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with the research, I've actually been working in research for the last four years. Um, and so it's actually really dope because our population is primarily Dominicans. Um, and so before I got into research, I actually had no idea about it. It just happened to be something that like, I just needed a change. I knew like semi direction I wanted to go in, but it was just like a long shot. And I ended up being something that I absolutely love. So with the, um, with the research, like basically we get to, you know, help our community and help them advocate for themselves when it comes to like research and medicine. So I'm sure you guys are familiar for like, for people that aren't, um, research has been really fucked up for people of color. Um, as, especially Spanish speaking people. Um, and so there is like a lot of mistrust that comes from it. Um, and so it's helpful that our team is basically made up primarily of Dominicans. So like when they come in and they see us and they're like, oh, and they're like, wait, but you look like somebody or like, where's your family from? And blah, 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 and things like mm -hmm. that. Like it helps build this rapport and like helps build this connection. And you know, it like, it makes them feel good because then we also don't just treat them like, okay, yeah, we need this info from you. Okay, bye. We're going to call you in like three years. You know, it's like we care, about, we care about their lives. The familial trust that mm -hmm. you're... Okay, so that's nice to hear because there is a mistrust with, um, from, with, yeah, with the doctors because they've never really been... So it's nice to hear that. Like Exactly. And you know, we, we share the results with them and like we explain it to them. And if for whatever reason, like they need to actually follow up with the doctor, what we've tried to do is also prep them. So we're like, okay, these are the questions that you want to ask. This is the info that you should go with. Um, also, 
you know, a lot of people that do research and they publish these articles, but like regular, regular folks are not reading these scientific articles. So we right. also started doing, you know, like community workshops where we'll call in like 30, 40 of them. Well, no, actually we reach out to like hundreds and then like 30, 40 are the people that oh, wow. are RCP. But, you know, we're like, hey, so remember when you did like this MRI, this is actually what came out from that. And they like, these are the results and this is like how you've helped us. And so that also helps them feel good because then they understand it. And a lot of them end up going back and sharing that with their family. Like um, a good friend of mine, uh, Michelle, she hosted one on nutrition and like how nutrition affects memory and how it affects aging. And so like afterwards, she says that like a lot of, especially like the older Dominican men were just like, espérate. Entonces, yo no, yo no puedo comer carne todos los días. Like, yo, yo no puedo comer carne. And she's like, no, it's not that. But, like, you want to be cognizant of it. So, like, if you're eating red meat on a Monday, maybe you won't have it again until, like, Friday. Or, or like, just try to do it, like, once a week. Try not to fry, you know, fry everything that, <laughs> that you put into your mouth. Like, it's okay to steam. It's okay to boil. Like, there are alternatives. Um, so, yeah, so, like, that, that's what really cool. I feel like our people is like one end or the other of the spectrum. Like there is middle understanding. Like I feel like my Bella, every time I told her like, oh, I'm doing vegetarianism right now. She's like, so you, chick <laughs> like you eat chicken? I'm like, no, that's not. She was thinking chicken is vegetarian. So yeah, and I don't understand that. Like, how do they think that? It's like you realize the chicken is meat, right? <laughs> right. But that's what I'm saying. It's like there's no middle ground. So like, I'm sure when they. Mm -hmm. hear out of the older people um, from that generation, there's just no like understanding of how like, okay, so then I just can't eat food at all. I'm going to <laughs> throw it all <laughs> out. So yeah, the refrigerator must out. be clean. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's interesting to see that you have to, you know, have these conversations. It's probably like the first time they're having these conversations really. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure that's a challenge at first. Yeah, and it has been, but you know, and that's something that, us as like the interviewers that we get to have that face to face and we get to explain it to them. And then we're able to report for lack of a better word, but like, sh or share it right better um, with our like higher ups and like with the PIs behind the study to be like, hey, so this is actually the feedback that we've gotten from our participants. And like, because it's coming from us, um, they, they tend to actually like care more about it um and we're able to you know like basically share the participants concerns because like at the end of the day we want them to be comfortable like y'all can get all the money that you want for these studies but if you can't get people to join in the studies it ain't worth shit so really like their opinion matters and so because like because we treat them basically like if this was our abuela or like abuelo in the study we always want to make sure that you know they are getting the respect and the care that they deserve um so like as much as we teach them to advocate, like we always end up having to advocate for them as well. And be like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not about to have them in like an MRI scanner for an hour and a half. No, that's crazy. Sorry. <laughs> that's ridiculous. I don't even want to do that myself. Like, why would I put some 80 year old person through that? Right. And I feel like also the medical industry don't understand our pain. Like I feel like compared to someone on a white older lady and who's brown and older lady, like they just don't look at our pain the same way. Mm -hmm. So they get in that MRI machine and not and don't care about how that affects like people who look like us. But I feel like mm -hmm. when they see like a white old lady, they'll probably be more like, oh, you know, fragile and delicate and sensitive with her. Um, and I read mm -hmm. that doctors are taught to do, like not to see our pain because they just kind of understand like, oh, well, you have a bigger threshold for pain mm -hmm. as a, mm -hmm. a person of color like and that's insane to me that they're taught this in the medical mm -hmm. industry oh yeah there was um so because you know I work at the hospital and it's a teaching hospital so they always like they have um what's called like grand rounds and so each one has different okay and so um we have like grand rounds and so each one has like different topics different things and so like residents go doctors um and it's open to staff as well and so there was one it was like a mandated one on implicit biases right oh, God. and so a part of it they actually shared 
some they shared example of, of like things that um that like fellow students had shared and then one of them um one of the students said that they were taught they were just like oh yeah so you know when latinas go in um what was the example it was like a latina goes in like she complains about a headache but they you know they tend to over exaggerate they're very dramatic so like you don't you don't need to really take it seriously it's probably just their way of like like taking a break from like the house or something like that and it's just like yo and like okay fine but like maybe clearly like one out of ten might be like "Mm, this sounds a little fucked up but like the rest of them are gonna be like oh they exaggerate like they're over dramatic okay and like they have that in mind so when they're actually in the hospital you know it's just like eh, whatever and that's yeah. like not even getting into the fact that they don't have translators they don't have you know, or like and the translators that they have are like a because Colum- they're like somebody <laughs> colombian <laughs> and it's just like we, we got different dialects <laughs> preach As we can see with uh, all the white women being recorded on camera, Mm -hmm. this COVID crisis and screaming about like not wanting to wear a mask, how dramatic they are. So for them to see us as being overly dramatic, like we have visual proof of y'all being hella fucking dramatic. Yeah. Y'all the key, y'all the D in drama. So it's just, it's insane that we're still here. 2020 and we're still here with the biases um but that's you know and and, and that's just you know we're you know we, we have to have these uh community health organizations that you're a part of that really build that trust and and act as um a liaison with the community because <laughs> we'll just like never go to the doctor have many family members that'll never go <laughs> like they'll just wait till something falls off and, and like, like yeah. and that's the problem. That's the problem. And I feel like that's also why our family members are so stubborn. It's just like, no, I so said sana. And it's just like, nah, but like sometimes you need an actual medical professional. But it's just like if you've gone before and they don't take you serious, like why why would What's you What's the go? point? Yeah, right. And we're scared to like even go because we don't want to be seen as our stereotype. We're like, we don't want to be seen as overly dramatic. So then we're like, well, maybe like I shouldn't go. It's scary think like we will not go to the doctor just because we're scared of being overly dramatic. Before we go into your personal uh, work, in terms of research for people that don't understand how impactful it is to our community, when you do these research analytics with the community, how does that then come back to the community and affect them? Because yes, you are working with doctors and providers and funders to kind of get this research out, but once this research is out, how does it trickle down to our community? So there are people who take the research and then convert that into public policy. So basically they take like, they take all of these results from the research and they're like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, like if this population is saying that they have these symptoms or like, or that they have, they're having these experiences because of lack of resources, then okay, then this is like a funnel of like where we should put put funds to. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's really like kind of, it's what public policies are based off of. Um, And so, you know, the issue is that a lot of the research has been very white-based. And so, you know, um, when it comes to like people of color, because there's there's such a distrust, it's like, it forces us to kind of be in like a very limited um, sample. And so, you know, they look at policies and they're like, oh, well, it's not really affecting them. Or they're just like, well, we'll just use like any sample. And it's just like, nah, you can't compare like lives of people of color to like white lives. It's no, nope, it's Ever. Different. <laughs> you just can't, you can't do that. Um, so by having like more, you know, black and brown um, indigenous folks in the, in the studies, then it actually gives them like a more accurate, you know, view of everything that's going on to actually make policies that are going to, you know, better impact us and not just be like, oh, Oh, you didn't like this? What? No? Right. You know, thank you for doing the work in research and for your colleagues because this isn't necessarily things that I get, information that gets publicized to the masses. Mm-hmm. So the fact that you are a researcher and you're working with our community um, and you're standing up for them, thank you so much for doing that. And hopefully this video would help other future researchers or people that are even interested in supporting yeah. our community know that you don't just have to go work at a nonprofit. You don't right. just have to go 
be, you know, put yourself in the education system that you could go and research and develop and work in public policy to make sure that our community is represented. So thank you, Julieta, for doing that. Well, thank you. Now, outside of working your regular nine to five, mm -hmm. you, you are the owner and founder of Buena Vibras Healing. That always sounds so good to hear. Owner and founder. Yes. <laughs> so, Tark, um, Mika, I know you had a question. I don't know if you want to go pose your question now. Okay. So, I think it's interesting because I don't, I don't hear uh, a lot of people who can have the science and medical uh, backgrounds as well mm -hmm. as uh, spiritual background and can combine uh, both of those experiences and understanding into uh, the work that you do. I feel like we either meet people who are only like science and based and not uh, and not use spirituality or integrate it into their their practices. So I think that's great because I feel like personally that's how I kind of go about life. Like I combine mm -hmm. from my own spirituality, yeah. you know, logic and science. <laughs> you know, like just to kind of come up to come up with something that I feel um, comfortable and trusting. So. Uh, I would love for you to just share uh, the work that you do and explain what it is to understand it. For Buena Viva Healing, like even came to be, the reason that I got into spirituality was because like my own healing. So I grew up in a Jehovah Witness Catholic household. Um, wow. Yeah. Sundays were so, the best days and Saturdays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Constantly battling like yourself. I feel like it's just like... oh. Oh, yeah. Ab ab absolutely. Um, like, dad side of the family is like, what? What are birthdays? My mom's side is like, it's a huge celebration and Christmas and all of that good stuff. So, yeah. Um, so, you know, I got to, like, ride the waves of both. Um, but because of, like, my experiences with that, I feel like I had associated religion and spirituality as thinking it was, like, just one. And I was mm -hmm. like, but this, I was like, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in none of that because blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, as I started like growing and my mom actually took me to my first Reiki session and I had no idea what it was. And I was just like, eh, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I loved it. And I just felt like this like huge weight was just like lifted off of my chest um, after the session. And I like started exploring that and started like exploring other alternatives. And then I was just like, wait a minute. I was like, all right. I was like, you could be spiritual, but you don't necessarily need to have like one religion. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it's also like, if you break down religions, like at the core of most of them, like it's really all the same. Um, right. It's just like, you know, people Different. just always like to think that they're right and everybody else is wrong. Yeah. But like at right. the base, it's just like, don't be a fuck up person. <laughs> like, at the bare minimum. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, just do good don't be a, be a good person. person don't kill right. you know the basics don't, kill, don't, don't steal don't cheat like right. you know, not that hard i grew up in a pentecostal church and if you know i used to go to a spanish one and an english one very intense on both sides but one of the rules was like women couldn't wear pants in the yeah. church and it's like, like and makeup right yeah and makeup so it's just it's weird to me, like you said, like at the core, it should be like, just don't be a fucked up person. But like, <laughs> wear pants, oh God, you're not- You a sinner. How just, dare like, And things like that, I feel like turns me off from the church as I was becoming into my own womanhood. And that really sucks because I do feel like spirituality is important, but like those experiences really turn me off. So to hear like there are um, different paths to spirituality, is really exciting and I think it's like a movement amongst people especially amongst uh, people of our generation who mm -hmm. are embracing, uh, embracing that what you're describing. As I've kind of dived more into my practice I'm like okay like relax young Julia like clearly there's something there's like something higher like there's something more than us because like we also can't be that selfish to think that you know we are like the end-all be-all. Um, and so clearly like, there has to be something, something more. And I don't, like, I don't consider myself religious at all, but I, but I have, you know, become like a spiritual person. I definitely believe in karma, like what comes around goes around. And that's both on the good and bad ends. 
you know? Right. And it's also not to say, like, if you do everything good, that nothing's bad that's going to happen to you because there also needs to be that balance. Um, but I think it's just, you know, figuring out ways to just navigate that and figure out, like, what works best for you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of been, like, my mission with when I'm even and it's like, I can't heal anybody, right? Like, I can't heal anybody because I can't do that work for you. But what I can do is kind of like open up and be like, you know what, like, this is what I see that you kind of need. These are some of the tools that you can use. I can be here to like help guide you, but you basically need to be the one to do the work because I, I can't live your life for you. Um, so yeah, so there's that. So I'm like very clear, like even, even when people are like, oh, you're a healer. And I'm like, but am I? Like, I'm really, I'm really funky with labels. I just, because <laughs> I feel like there's so much that comes with it, too. <laughs> Don't put all that responsibility on me. When shit yeah. Comes, they're going to be looking at you like, um, I thought Holy you were so Yeah. <laughs> you were supposed like, to make sure I found my man yeah. and I was going to get the big ass house. Yo, I was actually having, I was having this conversation with a friend and I was like, yo, how do you feel about love readings? And I was just like. I don't like I really don't like it at all and I I know like people are gonna be hurt because I've like I've had some people and like that's really their question for me but it's just like there's so much yep. more there's so much more and it's like you're always thinking mm -hmm. about like love from like an external it's just like yeah. now nah, like focus on like the love with you because once you have that like that's just what's gonna pour out into everything else and it's so funny that you say that because I have heard so many times with women in my life that have said oh god is gonna bless me with the man i'm just waiting on him to bless me with the, uh, with the man and i'm like but you in the house all day and you know, <laughs> how are you gonna be blessed bitch? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do the work you gotta go out <laughs> love yourself like you said do the work you love yourself and that will take you on a journey that could possibly uh reveal who this person is but that's so funny that i feel like people in religion do really fall back on well i'll just pray and God will do everything, and then they don't do the work. I feel like there has to be, you know, use yeah. the faith to motivate you to do yeah. the work. That's, I, I love the fact that you said that because I was just having that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, I get it, you know, because, like, a, I feel like Dominican's favorite thing is just, like, especially for an RSVP, they're like, si Dios quiere. Si, listen, like, okay. I say it to the day, I be like, okay. I hope I win the lottery, si Dios quiere. Si Dios quiere. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's, like, so back to like recent, that gets really annoying when I'm like confirming appointments and I'm like, okay, so no veo mañana. And they're like, si, si Dios quiere. And I'm just like, no, 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 Si tú, si tú quieres. Cause we putting it up to God just in case they don't want Yeah, Just let me know. God told me I needed to stay in and watch Christina reruns so I couldn't go. Like that's the thing. It's just like, you know, and it's like all of, I feel like all of the external tools and like crystals and oils and like you could have everything you can have everything at your disposal but it all needs to like it still needs to come from you you know mm -hmm. so it's just like you know i mean somebody could give you like a million dollars and like if you don't know how to <coughs> if you don't know how to use it right like you're gonna be broke the next day because you're just gonna be balling like Learn yeah. how to invest, right? So invest yeah. in yourself, like take care of yourself because then, you know, that's going to bring you more abundance at the end of the day. Um, and also like people just kind of want quick fix quick fixes too. And they're just like, what do you mean? Like, I want to go see you and my life didn't make a 180. And it's just like. Yeah, what? that works. <laughs> no. mm -mm. So no. for people that don't know, what exactly is Reiki and how did you become a Reiki practitioner? Yes. So Reiki is a Japanese healing practice. So it's strictly energy. Um, and basically what it is, is like I become like a conduit. Um, so like a channel of like universal energy like comes through me so that I can kind of help clear you out um, and basically unblock you from whatever like whatever chakras um, and things that like are blocked in your system um people also use it to like help help with anxiety um people say you know it's like a pain reliever as well especially people that have like joint pains or like inflammation things like that um everybody has a different experience so there's some people that i've given it to them they feel like tingles other feel like waves other feel like they think i use a feather and i'm like no 
<laughs> like, I don't use any of that. Um, you know, you have like hot Colton station, things like that. Um, but it's like, it's no physical touching at all, but it's just basically like, it's your energy. And so, you know, by the end of it, it's, people can be like very emotional just because you're basically like bringing to the, to the surface things that you had very deep. And so that's what I say is like with Reiki, it's kind of like the starting of the healing because once you have the session, you can either just like have wasted your time and just be like, oh, okay, I feel good. And then like, that's it. And like ignore it if you get emotional and things like that. Or you can take it as like that first step for your human journey to be like, damn, I just got emotional. Okay, why did I get emotional? Like, why was this my trigger? Things like that. I think that's a really um, yeah. technical fact that I want to uh, put out there because originally I thought Reiki was a form of massage. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there are a, so there are know. a lot of massage therapists Right. who incorporate reiki and Ooh. those are the only and those are the only ones that can touch you unless you're like doing reiki on your partner and then obviously y'all yeah. got that um yeah. but yeah no if you ever go somewhere and people try to put their hands all over you and they're not a massage therapist you better run if somebody like tells you like yo yeah no take off your shirt blah blah nope you don't got to take off your clothes for nothing you're getting scams so oh don't fall into that trap don't fall into that trap they told me to take off my panties because they wanted to make sure my yeah. inner circle was okay. My solar like, plexus was okay. Like, <laughs> nope. Don't get it. Oh. Got. <laughs> Don't get it. Got. I like that. <laughs> yes. And so, and, and then just to describe it, so you're, um, you're using your energy like through yeah. your head. Yeah. So okay. like, like there's like little motions, right. To like help like start to initiate the session. And then I basically start at the head. So at your crown chakra. Um, and then I just like kind of move throughout your body and I'll do that a couple of times. Um, so there's Reiki sessions that go up until like an hour, two hours. Oh my gosh. Um, the quickest that I like, the quickest really that I like to do is, um, like a 10, 15 minute. Um, sometimes I've, I've done Reiki at um, like friends events, but that one is a little like more pressed because it's like 20 plus people within a certain time. So for that, I'll just do like a very basic, just like aura cleansing, just to kind of like get everybody else's energy off of you, um, mm -hmm. which is also helpful too, because like we just interact, maybe not as much now because of COVID, but like, you know, generally we're interacting with a lot of people and whether we even if it's just like a very brief interaction, like their energy stays with us. And if they got some heavy ass shit, like, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. there's some people that are just like energy vampires that like afterwards, you're just like, damn, like. Yes, yes. Just, and like that can like stick with you longer than you think. So like that, I also try to clear off. So it's just like a clean slate for you. So and I know I you're worrying about your shit and not anybody else's shit. And I've seen a lot of YouTubers who are, uh, practicing Reiki through YouTube and I was wondering what do you think about that um, especially now during COVID thinking, well is it legit if people want to like try it didn't work for me I looked at like a 10 minute one it was a very uh soulless uh face I was looking at and she was just like <laughs> and I was like this isn't gonna work for me <laughs> like so I'm interested to hear like your thoughts on something like that so I'll put the disclaimer out. So there are people that do distance Reiki. Okay. Oh. There, mm -hmm. are, there are people who do distance Reiki. I personally do not. Um, I, you know, there, there are people that have claimed that it's worked for them. Um, but with my beliefs and also like the way that I was taught with my teacher as well. Um, like I don't do distance Reiki. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I can send you good vibes. I can like, I'll pray for you, you know, but I don't, I don't necessarily do like the energy work distance. <laughs> That's not me. Not you. It's not Julieta. It's not, no. It's not Julieta. <laughs> so, so now that we are in a COVID post world, how does that change the work that you do and in, in the challenge? What are the challenges that you're facing? Um, I mean, I haven't been able to do Reiki because, you know, I haven't, I haven't seen people like that. I've been doing a lot more of Akashic Records. Akashic Records are basically like your soul's library of all the lives that you've lived. 
And so with that, like, you're able to kind of pick up on either like different patterns or like cycles that you've gone through and to be like, oh, wait a minute. So like in one, um, so in one, I was apparently, damn, what was the word she used? I don't know, point blank, I had money. So <laughs> you were rich, I had rich. Money, yeah. which is also, which apparently is why like I spend the way that I do in that I don't, I don't like I don't limit myself or I never like I don't think from a place of lack that's what mm. it is so I don't think of a place of lack so I don't think like damn it if I spend this today like I'm not gonna have I kind of have like the mindset like I'm gonna figure it out and I'm gonna get yeah. it um which honestly has worked for me because there's been times where like I'll be spending the last like five dollars in my bank account and I'm just like tu te pasa, tu te pasa. and then like you know then somebody might be like oh I need blah 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 can you help and I'm like yes I can actually <laughs> <laughs> appreciate right. you thank you um so yeah so like little things like that um you know and like a worst problem is, you know, I tend to like run away from my issues or I used to, I used to look at, we're growing, right? We're growing now. Yeah. We don't do um, <laughs> um, but yeah, like, you know, I had like a tendency where I was like, if I didn't like shit, I would just be like, all right, bye. I'm out. And that's mm. it. And, like never actually would face it. So it's just like, oh, so it's not just like a, like a current me thing. This is like, this is shit that I've done before. Like, okay, Julia, now, now that you know that this is like a pattern for you, let's work on like correcting that. Um, so yeah, so I've been doing like a lot more of that, um, strengthening like other tools of like the Oracle readings and tarot cards, um, and really just like focus on my, on myself too. I've kind of been taking COVID to do that. Um, I'm like back at my parents' house. So like, so grateful that I'm also at my parents' house at, with like current me because living <laughs> with them with like before I moved out and I was just like, yeah. Mm -hmm. like yeah. that that was like a testament to the growth that I've done over the years and I was just like yo good job Juliet because things that would have gotten you mad before like don't and like your communication is better and you got boundaries now too like cool look at the growth look at the growth because yeah, yeah, you, you know boundary, boundaries with parents mm -hmm. right I feel like I have a whole episode on that one I feel like I remember <laughs> the first time I actually said no and I was I was like, last <laughs> I was like <laughs> <"Yay."> <laughs> Yeah, like, no, I'm a mother now. I can say these things to you, yeah. mother. No. No. How they feel. Yeah. So what, what has your, what have your parents thought of this whole journey of you? They're like, yes, my daughter's an academic. She's helping the people. She's always out here trying to touch people's auras. What is she doing? What is okay, so, okay, so. Um, so because my mom was the one that introduced me to Reiki, she was like a little more understanding, things like that. My dad, because he's like on the Jehovah Witness side, he actually attended an event that I was vending at back in August. So like he got to see it and he was just like, oh, okay. He like made like a comment when I was doing a reading on someone and he was like, oh, no, mate falta el cigarro. And I'm just like, cause he was like, cause like then, all, like, cause you know, then our parents like, if they're not like aware of it, then they're just like, if it's not Christianity, it's Santeria. And it's just like, yeah, right. I was nah, it's no not, distinction. It's not <laughs> Again, we don't have a middle ground. <laughs> no, it's always. And then I was wonder what. Because it's something that um, my mom and like even from my dad, like I feel like the thought of something like that was always like, you know, witchcraft or voodoo. And so um, I think earlier on like that's what was taught to me like I always mm -hmm. felt like wrong like in my spirit I'm like this I feel like very drawn to the, the work that you do but then there's always this like nagging thing in the back of my head that like no it's wrong you're doing <laughs> things so like what do you say to people who are like maybe interested but they've been taught that okay mm -hmm. something you're inviting I don't know how to like what's the phrase but like you're you're, you're inviting, inviting the devil into your house <laughs> yeah <laughs> just say, say what they say um i mean so i what's worked for me is i take things at my own pace 
Mm -hmm. um so i'm not like i'm not concerned you know about like what the next person is being especially like on a spiritual level um i'm really like i there's been whispers there's been whispers like you know in my family and like i things that i've noticed and like have put put two and two together now where i'm just like oh so this is like the thing with the numbers this is the thing with like dreams and things like that but like nobody has ever really said like brujeria right or like things like that they're just like gifts that people have yeah and again, and again you know it's one of those things where it's like it's the labels that i'm just mm -hmm. like that one requires like a commitment um and it's not, it's not something that like i take lightly so you know like throughout this i have found out more you know people in my like in my family line where i'm just like oh so it's not actually something super far-fetched that i actually mm -hmm. you know just fell into this right. um but you know it's it's really finding things on your own at your own pace and i would say be careful of who you're putting your trust into when it comes to spiritual work mm -hmm. um and so like now you know there's thousands of people on the gram um you know on social media that are doing the work and it's like there have been people that have been recommended to me that i don't care for and that mm -hmm. doesn't take away from like the work that they do and it doesn't take away from like other people that i've worked with them and have had amazing experiences but just for me like we just did not buy and i did not care for them and i'm just like you know what then that's okay like diving jennifer like they work for you cool mm -hmm. thank you but like i tried it and i was just like no i'm okay because also like with something with spirituality is like you need to make sure that you're comfortable at the end of the day like mm -hmm. i'm not you know like i got some people i get some random ass like follows and like i scroll through and it's just like it's like deep like heavy voodoo stuff and i'm just like uh, mm, you know yeah. what i'm not trying to walk through those doors so you know what i'm just gonna like block you because i also don't know you and i also don't mm -hmm. know if, nah. what your intentions are we're yeah, yeah. And, there's, and, there's and i don't want to i'm not trying to dive into into anything i'm not ready because yeah. like spirits are real you know like yeah. and that's why i say like you need to be careful like you need to do it at your own pace so that way you know if that's something that you decide to do later on that you're ready for it and like that you've prepared mm -hmm. for it and you're not just diving into the deep end just because fulano and fulano lo están haciendo. yeah nah leave fulanito leave them alone that's a rock you'll get there <laughs> you need to get there <laughs> yeah Facts. um so i did want to go back to because we had filmed this a little bit earlier and you did do a healing reiki session a quick one on me um I was just going to say that, you know, looking at the video months <laughs> later, how freakishly accurate it has become. Oh, uh, yes, because I remember you were like, you about to birth some new stuff. And I was like, well, I'm not birthing a child. <laughs> so that's, that's not me. That was Mika's job. Mika got yeah, that, was Mika. that was Mika. <laughs> that was Mika. She was birthing the kid. I was birthing my future. So but I will not disclose in such moments. <laughs> things have definitely popped off after post COVID of not having now having to live my own life and not having a nine to five and finding myself birthing a whole new world. So I would just like to say and credit you for giving me that information because I would not know that three, four months later that we would be here and I would be starting a brand new life. So I would like to give a testimony <laughs> that Julieta shit was real. <laughs> And now since Amika is no longer pregnant, it yeah. is time that she gonna get herself a little reiki lakey. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I, I definitely need it. I just remember like <laughs> one time in yoga, Bikram yoga, and like they have you lay down and they say, you know, just close your eyes and think about like the good things you did for your body today. And I just remember crying when he said that. I'm like, why am I crying? But like that goes to show you like, you know, like, like stuff like that when you're in tunes, you know, with your body and the energy that you're exchanging. And it's like this combination of things happening all at once. It's a very emotional experience. And I feel like mm -hmm. after birth, like I'm a person that tends not to like deal with things. I kind of just like, I don't have time for it. I'm on the go, go, go. And I never mm -hmm. sit down and really deal with it. So I feel like something like that, especially after the, the labor and the birth that I experienced, which is a very intense um, and emotional one, that this is something I could use because I just don't deal with stuff and I don't know how to deal with it. Like people are like, how are you? And I'm like, I'm good. Like, I don't, you know, I don't. You might, you might not like me after, you might not like me right after <laughs> AC, I'm going to you know. <laughs> I'm but like, you're going to appreciate me three, four months later though. Hey. That's, <laughs> it's something I needed. Um, and I think 
you know, this could also be really helpful with new moms, a first time mom. Um, and first, like, oh my God, experience is so insane. Like, you know, and, and everything that happened during my birth, like it was everything I was afraid of happening happened. Like, so mm. it was, I had to deal with an emergency C-section and 48 hours of labor and, and like all of these things. And I don't think I really dealt with it. I think I'm, I feel fine. I'm moving along and doing mm. things. But I'm like, I feel but like- But are you just moving to avoid? I could be because I feel like I'm like, I'm like, that was intense. Like, why is it not, like, I'm not affected by it. I'm not sad by it. Like, I need to like, mm -hmm. I'm not release. Yeah, in some way I need to release it, but I don't know how. And I don't even know if I have, like, I guess right now is what I'm saying. It's like, I don't recognize a problem, but I, I know <laughs> logically that was a very intense situation. I mean, I think that, that like what you do would help a lot of people who experience it. Oh, that might man. just be the new wave. Yes. <laughs> Breaky after birth, like put that shit on my insurance, baby. Let's go. <laughs> I know. Yeah, just go. It really like they really should add alternative things to insurance. Yeah. Cause... Yes, because the white man's medicine does not always work. Okay. No, and I, you know, I used to work in pharmaceutical advertising, and I know all about like the shit that a lot of these medications are most of the time are unnecessary due to your body and your mind. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's the first thing that they'll prescribe you. Oh, I want to do that. I want to do that. So, but I just also think we come from um, generations of women who are like, you don't got time for sadness. You got to go. You got to go and out. Like, so that's the thing too, right? Is like learning that we are, we are, I think it's like seven generations. I think like more immediate, it's three generations, right? Because women, like we, we are born with the eggs that, that we're going to have for our life, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that like, our grandmother had our mom in her. And then when she was pregnant with our mama, like we were up in there. So like whatever our grandmother went through manifested like into mommy, which then comes to us, which is why sometimes it's like, yo, but this isn't my shit. So it's right. like, it's not even just healing for us. It's like healing for the generations before us. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's why I think, you know, us like you know this generation like we are so focused where we're just like yo now nah, we're not gonna keep moving just because like we have obligations and that like these are, these are things that we have to do like no we're gonna sit we're going to actually try to figure out like why the fuck is this making me cry like mm. it right. shouldn't right and it's just like so it's like it's healing that we're doing i feel like honestly before we even get to healing that we're doing for ourselves we end up doing healing for like the women before us and mm. then, and then once we like scoop through those layers and it's just like, okay, Juliet, now what is your shit? All yeah. right. And so I think, I think that's why like, it's really important to do it to like take the time because, you know, in the past, I'm definitely more of like a go, 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 or not even so much go, 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 but like, I will much rather be like, yo, Mika, you got something going on? Like, all right, cool. I'll help you. Jen, you got something going on? Cool. I'll help you as a way to avoid dealing with my own shit. But then I'll feel good because I'm like, oh, no, I'm still helping. So like, no, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. It's cool. But it's just like, no, nah, I'm just avoiding. One of those things, running away from problems, right? Like <laughs> avoiding those things. So it's like realizing, okay, no, I need to take a step back and like actually take care of you. Because like eventually you, that just ends up being when you just like pop off and you don't know why. Like hubby might leave like the toilet bowl, like the toilet seat up and you like end up spazzing on him. It's just like, yo, I'm bad. But it's because it's all these things that have piled up. You mean a minute? Deal with. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> so what would you give someone that's, you know, in that realm of, I, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. And I have all these feelings and I feel like I'm about to burst, but Reiki scares me. And I, I go into church is not my thing. How would you tell somebody to start within their spiritual journey? If they're not ready to take that step and talk to you or talk to someone else? Um, journal. Journal. Mm -hmm. God damn it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right, it's right my feelings because, because that's the thing and it's like at first you know when we first like start out with journey it could be like really awkward so like sometimes we need things that it's just like something timed because we also i could feel like we also work on this thing where it's just like you know if it doesn't come to us immediately then it's just like we're failing at it at it and it's just like that's not again this like this shit isn't linear like there's as many books and self-help books out there there is no manual for like how to heal and you know you could think that you're good and then eight months later something happens and it triggers and it's just like oh damn I was missing like that piece of it um and so journaling 
even if it's, even if you just set your timer just to be like, all right, I'm going to do it for like three minutes and whatever you get on paper for those three minutes, but it's something that's coming out of you. And like, eventually it comes out more natural and it's just a way like one for you to reflect. Right. And it's a way for you to actually get things off of your chest, even if you're not ready to share it with somebody else. Cause that's also like the scary thing too, is like, people are just like, nah, but I don't want somebody knowing all my shit. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. You don't need to know that's that. Something- we were always taught to like to oh like you can't tell your business yeah. it's mm-hmm. we have um we have to wrap it up <laughs> so, so yeah Jen, take it away Julieta, tell our audience where they can find you please Ooh, yes so y'all can find me on instagram at Julieta vibes so j-u-l-i-e-t-a v-i-b-e-s um and in a couple of weeks, y'all can find me in DR. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be moving out there um, for, you know, a year, maybe more, who knows. But yes, no, but I am accessible um, with Julieta Vibes. I, you know, I respond to DMs if people just have questions, things like that. I'm very open, not as scary. To- <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. I, I, you know, I know we both really appreciate your time. Yes, thank, thank you. you. I love you both. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, y'all. Thank you. I am Jay Gill. I am Kenya. This was Julieta. <laughs> and we are these two locas. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.